ever fall down that cottagecore rabbit hole on TikTok and Instagram where there's just videos of girls wearing cute stays and corsets and you just get desperately jealous and decide that you must have some as soon as humanly possible? Then you look online to see where you might purchase one of these items and while they are reasonably priced for how much effort goes into one of these garments, your financial decisions rest between buying a garment that you can't really wear out anywhere because you live in the deep south and that would be weird and saving for retirement yeah me too this is a very relatable experience but uh, uh oh there is another way my friends thrift store tablecloths oh, wow so today i invite you to join me in whimsy impulse and extreme cheapskatedness to make a couple of corset bodice tops the chaotic way. These are going to be a bit more bodicey, a bit closer to the look of stays because that's what I personally prefer. So they're not going to have boning or busks or any of that stuff. One might say that this is the bare bones way to do this. Make sure to unsubscribe below. If my fellow sewing goblins would like to follow along, you'll need a few yards of outer and lining fabrics, depending on your size. I tend to use old tablecloths and curtains I get from the thrift store because they're affordable and it's the more sustainable option. Scissors, duct tape, saran wrap, and a marking chalk or a Sharpie. Grommets with washers, not eyelets, and lacing of your choice. And of course, pens and either needle and thread or a sewing machine. Hello, these are the fabrics I'm going to be using today. I'm primarily going to be focusing focusing on this more like pretty floral fabric just because it's the most cottage core one but for my own purposes because I really need just a basic black corset top I'm actually also going to be making another one from this black fabric which I'll focus on here and there but the processes are going to be the same so I'll mostly show you guys this and then this fabric is the same fabric that I used for one of the pinafores that I made I'm going to be using this probably as bias tape and then also lining for maybe both of the corsets so if you are going to be doing this the chaotic way the first First step is famously to wrap yourself in duct tape and saran wrap so that you can make a pattern from your body measurements. Clutch. So even though it's like 100 degrees outside, I've elected to do it out here so that we have a nice woodland backdrop. We're here for the vibes, you know what I'm saying? Expect a lot of struggling because I normally have a friend to help me with this part. Step one of this venture is to wrap your person in saran wrap so the tape doesn't stick to your flesh. As you might guess, this is definitely not a science. I just kind of wrap it however is most comfortable. Although in this heat, I'm not sure if there is a comfortable way to wrap plastic around your body. Body, I kind of felt like a marinating pork chop, but it is about to get so much worse. For the duct tape, I normally wrap in horizontal lines around my waist, but then switch to more diagonal or vertical strips around my bust. Once the duct tape is upon your person, you can draft how you want the pattern pieces to break down. I chose a pretty simple breakdown for both of these corsets. The main body broke down into three pieces, and I mirrored those to create six total pieces plus two straps. And now it is time to transfer our pattern pieces onto our fabrics. I just traced around the outer edge of each of the pattern pieces and then added about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. And then I'll just flip each piece to get the mirrored side of the corset and do the same thing. I did this for both the black and floral corsets and then repeated all the steps for the lining layers. And then it was just on to a ton of cutting. And no, I still haven't gotten fabric scissors yet. So I was using office scissors for this and I apologize in advance for the pain of my audience. <laughs> Also, thank you so much to all the people who keep offering to send me fabric scissors, but it's okay. I will buy some. That is very kind, but I feel guilty having someone purchase fabric scissors when they're like $20. I am perfectly capable of purchasing them myself. I'm just a cheapskate. You know what I'm saying? Now that I've got everything cut, it's time to pin everything together, which means my fingers are about to look something like this. When you pin, you want to pin the seam allowance on the inside of your fabric so when you sew everything together, your seams are hidden. I have pinned and left seam allowance on, this is the outer layer of the first one, and then I've also done that on the outer layer of the second corset that I'm making. I'm going to go sew these and then I'll be doing the same with my lining layers. And now I'm just sewing all my individual layers together. I usually do this with a basting stitch and sew about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of my fabric so there's plenty of seam allowance. Now when you have four layers to sew together, this 
can get tedious. So I recommend watching Downton Abbey while it's doing so to make the experience even more dramatic. When all the individual layers are sewn together, it is time for what is quite possibly the worst part, pinning the outer and lining layers together. <laughs> this is the bane of my existence. This is how you get those nice clean edges and hide all of your seams. You can also add bias tape or trim to the outside to finish your layers like I did with my Libra Witch corset for a more detailed look. But remember, we are doing this on a forest gremlin budget, so I didn't do that for these. I'm also very lazy. <laughs> didn't feel like making bias tape. It takes so long. To make your finishings all professional and fancy-like, we must first press our seams so each of the layers lay flat. If you don't do this, sewists in the YouTube comments will curse you. To pin together your actual layers, it can be really helpful to iron in a fold to your seam allowance so that it's easier to pin. But I'm lazy and that takes too long, so I normally just fold in all the edges myself and then pin them. Which also takes forever and I'm probably just self-sabotaging. I like to tell myself that it's faster. And while it's doing this, I also added another layer to the black corset off camera because the fabric just wasn't quite thick enough, and this made pinning this corset together about 800% harder. <sighs> Ugh. This was not a very good way to do this. It ended up all lumpy. Little bits of the fabric kept popping out of the pins, so I had to add more pins. Am I convincing you to make one of these yet? Finally, I just repeated the same steps for pinning the edges of the straps, which is far worse because there's a curved edge on the pattern, and I overall didn't do a great job, so I'm going to blissfully gloss over that step. And now it's time for the piece de resistance. Sewing all the edges of the fabric, it's so fun, it's so satisfying. Look at those clean edges edges. Well, I guess it's not so fun if you're hand sewing, but you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Suckers. Anyways, for this step, I use a thread that's close to the color of my main fabric and sew as close to the edge as possible to get a really clean look. I also try not to go too fast so that I have good control over how the edges are finishing up. And also because I went really fast during this part, hit a pin that I didn't take out fast enough, dang it, and snapped my needle in half. Fun stuff. If you sew as much as I do, make sure to buy some spare needles, kids, because I go through those babies like bags of flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah. All right, now all the individual pieces have been sewn together. So the final step is going to be to take a nail because I don't have an awl and punch holes and then install grommets and lacing and then they will be done. Now it's Grommet time! So like I said in the material section, I highly recommend purchasing grommets instead of eyelets because grommets come with a little washer to put on the back and it just keeps it from pulling out of the fabric whenever it's under tension, like it will be whenever you have to lace up a corset. I had to learn this the hard way by buying a frick ton of eyelets for my Libra Witch costume and having absolutely no use for them. But to install grommets, the Kira way. Simply mark where you want them to go and punch a hole in your fabric with a rusty framing nail that you stole from college and your premium 22 ounce framing hammer. Uh? I hit my thumb while I was doing this and it hurt really, really bad. And after that, I widened the holes with an old paintbrush like a normal person. And I didn't even install grommets the correct way because the head that I have with my grommet kit doesn't fit the grommets I had. So I just didn't use one and that's why they look all warped. If your fabric isn't too thick for the grommets in a couple places like mine was, eventually you'll have a beautiful corset that is ready to be laced up and worn. I ended up using grommets and lacing to attach the front and back of my straps, which I really like the look of. It's so cute. And to switch things up for the black corset, I trimmed the hemmed edge of the floral fabric I had and used that as lacing. Aren't I a sustainable queen? Anyways, after a quick lace up and try on, both are finished, which means it is time for the reveals.
Hi, hello, thank you for joining your friendly neighborhood pile of leaves on this sewing adventure today. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys at a point in the future sometime. Bye!